Hello guys, Dragonzilla here with a figure review. So, as we all know, Kong Skull Island is just around the corner. And to celebrate, I'm going to be taking a look at the 2005 Peter Jackson King Kong figures from Playmates. Well, one of them is a Papo figure, but I'll talk about that later. I'll be looking at each figure in one video, depending if it doesn't go on too long. However, I will not be going into too much detail on each one because I'm also currently working on my latest movie, The Dragon Complex. So I'll just be talking about what I think of the characters and what the functions are. Yeah, this review will be different. And thus I want to get this video out before seeing Skull Island. So we start off with the star of the show himself. King Kong, the eighth wonder of the world, who's been in the wars, literally, because he's got so many scratch marks all over his body. Well, mind you, if you were a giant ape living on an island with dinosaurs and other bloodthirsty monsters, you'd be in this state too. Now, people say that Peter Jackson's Kong looks too much like a real gorilla, and I agree he does. But I suspect that this is what the king would look like in real life. However, the new Kong looks more like the original 1933 Kong, but more up to date. Well, if I was going to make a Godzilla movie, I'd want my Godzilla to look like the original 1954 Gojira, but with a modern look. Also, Kong in the remake, and maybe at times in the original, is quadruped, where here the figure is a biped, just like in the Toho films. Uh, yeah, Kong did actually appear in two Toho films, King Kong vs. Godzilla and King Kong Escapes. Uh, fun fact. If you're a Godzilla fan or a monster fan, then you probably knew that, but to all casual viewers who didn't know that, well, there you go, that's a bit of a fact for you. Playmates made more than one Kong figure with different abilities. And this one, I believe, is known as the Smashing Kong. He has a button on his back that makes him smash creatures down, like on the Fanatosaurus. When Kong fights T-Rexes, he breaks their jaws. But if he fights raptors, he breaks their bones and shows it off to the rest of the pack. Damn! Too bad a scene like this didn't happen in the movie. That looks awesome! Since the subject is here, let's talk about... The Vanatosaurus, or Velociraptor Point 2. And yeah, it doesn't have feathers, but since it's a fantasy raptor, that could be excused. So this guy was one of those figures that came with a different Kong. There were the Pteranodon, Terabus Mordax, and Juvenile V-Rex. Figures that I had been meaning to get back in the day, but never did. The Vanatosaur has two gimmicks, such as the opening jaw, but... When you let go, it snaps shut, so it doesn't stay permanently open. The other gimmick is this button that makes the figure collapse, and once it does, it becomes lifeless and corpse-like. And to bring it back to life, you wind the figure up and have it standing on its own two feet again. However, since it's a wind-up figure, it can be dodgy. But most of the time, the Fanatosaur will cooperate. Next up, we have Furadon, and it's a beast that I have a love-hate relationship with. Love because, although it's a scavenger, it's a crocodile with a dinosaur's head, at least so I've heard, and hate because of the pose. The pose is awkward, making the figure unsuitable for animating. Trust me, one time I was planning to do an animation with the Photodon having a crossover and fighting King Ghidorah, just for a bit of fun. But I thought the pose was too awkward, and so the crossover never happened. So it's good for display, but not for making films, unless you're doing a parody or a cameo. The Photodon has two gimmicks, and they are the snapping jaws and moving tongue. It's not so often when you see ton articulation, but there you go. Adds a nice touch. And the other is the same as the Venatosaurus, which is the collapse gimmick. And I remember 
when I got this figure back in 2006, I thought that it was broken and glued some of the legs and arms in, not realising that it's meant to collapse. This was when YouTube was in its infancy, so there were no figure reviews back then. At least, I don't think there were at the time. So, I didn't know much on these figures. Next up, we have a set of three, and they are the Creatures of Skull Island. Taking a look at the first one, which is the Arachnoclaw, which looks like a cross between a spider, a prey mantis, and a crab. Oh, and also a beetle, because it appears to have wing casings, like a real beetle on its back. It has a working feature, which is extending the neck, something that I don't remember it doing in the movie. I'm sure it did, and it can, but it's been a long time since I last saw the film. The same figure is the giant mosquito, whose name escapes me at this current time. It does have a name, but I don't remember what it's called. The mosquito doesn't have any functional features, it's just a standard figure. But still, it's a good one. And the third figure is the Scorpiopede, which is, as you can see, half scorpion and half centipede. It was meant to appear in the movie, but it never did. Now, I like this one because it's an interesting creature, and thus I like scorpions. And it also has a gimmick. See this lever? Well, when you pull it, you can make the pincers snap shut and open. The Schleich Emperor Scorpion had movable pincers, but Scorpiopede is a killer machine. This is a gimmick that you could probably do all day, and it may never get tiring once you get control of it. Finally, we have the Intruder, which is the Papo running Tyrannosaurus Rex. Why is this guy in the place of the Stratosaurus Rex? Well, that's because I do not have the V-Rex. I did try looking on eBay for it before Christmas last year, but I never could find it, so I went for the running T-Rex, and thus people say it looks a lot like the first Stratosaurus Rex anyways, so it's close. At least in the head. Well, when Kong fights dinosaurs, most of the time it's a Tyrannosaurus or something like it. Sometimes it's a normal Rex like in the original, or in the case of King Kong Escapes, Gorosaurus. The running Tyrannosaurus looks like a mixture of the Stratosaurus and Jurassic Park's T-Rex. So in a way, you could say it's some sort of hybrid. It may not have articulation in the arms or legs, but it does have articulation in the jaw. Well, he'd better keep his jaw closed because King Kong's fatality move is breaking jaws. And Kong himself does look pretty good when fighting Rexy. This isn't what the jaw breaking move looks like, but this is as close as I can get it. Who's kin now, bitch? Yeah! So yeah, those are my thoughts on the King Kong Playmate figures from 2005. Sorry that it was all rushed. If I wasn't working on the Dragon Complex and Kong Skull Island was weeks away, then they would have been in separate videos and explained in more detail. My future reviews won't be like this, they will be done properly next time. I'm really looking forward to seeing Kong Skull Island, I'm sure it will be a great movie, and hopefully the figures and merchandise will arrive in the UK soon. This is Dragonzilla signing out, and I'm looking forward to seeing the 8th wonder of the world return in all his glory. See ya!